Welcome to the The Generation Podcast, an audio resource dedicated to a generation of young people who are committed to total surrender to God and total dependence on His power to reach the world with the gospel of Christ. This podcast is designed to strengthen and encourage through a series of Bible-based practical talks. Even our most valued relationships will one day let us down and seem to betray our trust. Every relationship is different and each one has its own needs, but the answer is always the same. Open your heart to this pivotal advice from Dr. Jim Van Gelderen in this podcast entitled Instruction for Insecurity. Welcome to the The Generation Podcast. This is Jim Van Gelderen and I'm broadcasting today from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. We just finished our fall 2018 tour and had a wonderful tour. Uh, some of you listening, I, I would assume, were a part of some of those meetings that we had. Uh, we started in West Virginia, went largely down the East Coast, and ended in Florida, just ended in Jacksonville, Florida. And we had some wonderful meetings. A lot of kids came to know the Lord, as well as young people dealing with things in their life that were hindering them, usually issues of unbelief that either resulted in sin or bitterness or um, some other issue, but it was just a blessing to see steps of faith taken, young people touched, and certainly we were encouraged. God is still in the reviving business, young people, and uh, he can still do in your heart and life uh, what you may not realize that he can do. And sometimes just that hope that there is an answer, there is a solution to my problem. I wanna deal with something that um, uh, you'll probably hear me from different angles dealing with this. I've been on a journey since May, I haven't, Don't really think I've done a podcast on it yet, but I certainly have thought about it and think perhaps that tonight would be a a good time uh, to begin to to deal with this situation of um, something that uh, I might, if I used one word, I'd use the word strongholds, uh, that people sometimes have wrong ways of thinking, things that get in their hearts that hinder their Christian life. Maybe I could put it this way, they hit a ceiling. I just want to deal with one angle here that hopefully be a help to you, but uh, there's a verse of scripture in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 21, fathers provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. I think one uh, definition I've saw saw that was dispirited. And uh, young people can become discouraged, dispirited. And often uh, they come because of what somebody has called father wounds. Now, there may be two kinds of people listening. I may be listening to a parent. Why would young people why would your children become discouraged? Well, uh, the Bible says fathers uh, don't provoke them to anger. So it's clearly when a child is provoked to anger, uh, the, the fleshly response is going to be discouragement unless the grace of God steps in on the deal. And I'm going to deal with that just brief, uh, uh, briefly here tonight. But uh, there's two aspects I've seen that discourage a young person from a father. So if you're a father, let me just take you note on this. Number one, it would be anger. In other words, it'd be dealing with a situation uh, in anger, and it's the kind of anger that is clearly selfish. Uh, it is um, is that where that is not uh, does not have um, any sense of uh, God in the deal. Uh, what we might call carnal or fleshly anger that discourages a young person. And I know that particularly there are a lot of men who came from homes where their father was angry, and as a result, they've picked up that habit, and it discourages young people. I, I have dealt now for 35 years, almost 35 years working with young people. Number one problem is bitterness. There's no doubt about it. The, the number one problem under bitterness uh, is wounds that come from angry fathers. Big deal, and it's a big issue. The second one would be passive fathers or absent fathers, sometimes literally absent, sometimes in a sense not literally absent, but they're there, but they don't engage the child in any kind of father-child relationship. I was talking to a young man recently, and he just said to me, uh, it hurts. And he was talking about the absence of a phone call at a very key time in his life from a father. And uh, I could sense the pain. I could feel the pain as he looked at me and said, it hurts. Some of you listening understand that. Now, if you're a father, I'm trying to encourage you, do not do that. God's grace is big enough. You can overcome anger. This is not the message, but you've got to see that there is a way out. And also if you're passive, and a lot of fathers are passive, and don't engage their child in a real deep relationship. God's grace is big enough to change that. This is not the podcast to deal with that, except to say they exists. Now I wanna address the young person that says, well, preacher, that's what I deal with. I do find myself getting discouraged. Another passage of scripture says, um, provoke not your children to wrath. Same idea, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. 
And uh, certainly a father that is engaging his children is going to nurture them and admonish them. And that has both positive and negative, but certainly the positive is a huge issue. It would be what we might call affirmation. In other words, encouraging a young person, affirming what God is doing in their life. I think of my father spending time, I'm sure, alone with God, and then affirming what uh, he believed God was doing in my life. And those affirmations come with me to today, bring a sense that God had a purpose for my life. And early on, my dad would encourage me in that. But I realize that probably is an exception today. So you say, what do you do, preacher? What do I do? I'm in a situation, maybe your father's not even there. What do you do if you're in a situation where you do have a father that loses his temper and, and it discourages you? What do you do, perhaps, if you're in a situation where your father's there, but he's not there? These are real things that are not just found in our unsaved world. They are found in Christianity. Dysfunction is certainly a part of our homes today. If you're listening from a foreign country, I would assume they're there in your country. They're certainly in ours. And the the, um, uh, the disintegration of the home, uh, the biblical home, is, is certainly upon us. So you say, preacher, what do you do? Well, one of the things that uh, these kind of situations bring is what I might call an insecurity. And there's talking to young people. You, you find yourself comparing yourself with other people. You have a great fear of failure. Uh, in fact, fear is a big part of insecurity. And you you also might be in a situation where um, uh, you, you have an undue uh, focus on what people think of you. And these things are all just symptomatic of insecurity that comes from uh, a situation where you might have uh, these father wounds. I was reading a book that was dealing with the issue of pornography from a biblical perspective. And the man said he had counseled thousands of men who were in sexual addictions. And he says, almost all of them have deep father wounds. Well, this kind of opened my heart to the fact that this is an issue. It's easy to ignore. It's kind of an uncomfortable subject, but it has to be addressed. If you find yourself in a situation where you have an undue concentration on what other people think of you, there is an answer. Now, what does the Bible say about fear? Because you say, well, the Bible doesn't say anything about insecurity, and that's true, but it does address fear, one of the biggest topics of the Bible. In fact, God often says, fear not, be not afraid. So gang, here's what I wanna challenge you with, and I'll have to follow this up, but I wanna just challenge you with this, and this is the very first step. If you do struggle with an insecurity or a fear that comes, and it might come for different reasons, but the answer is always this, Fear not, I am with thee. Jesus said to Peter uh, before he got out of the boat and walked on water, be not afraid, it is I. The answer for fear is always God. And it's the fact that God's not just God, he says, I'm with you. Uh, Jesus said, it is I, I'm right here, Peter. Now, I don't want you to miss this. The very first thing you need to understand with fear or insecurity or comparing yourself with others or a deep sense of I can't do this or a sense of failure or a sense of unworthiness or sometimes even a sense of um, uh, almost setting yourself up, I can't do that, I got a you know, fear of failure for the future, is the fact that Jesus is with you. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. And it always starts with getting back to the fact that inside of you, if you're saved is the Lord Jesus, and he is everything you need to overcome. So my burden here tonight is to start you off with this great truth that it always begins with a dependence on Jesus to overcome the wounds, the fears, the comparison, whatever might come as a result of being provoked to discouragement or wrath uh, as a result of perhaps an absent or an angry father. Now, again, if you're a father listening, let me urge you, get with your kids, get it right. Ask God for grace, get with your pastor. You gotta see the importance of overcoming it. Now, if you're a teenager and perhaps your dad's not even saved or, or doesn't see it or is not listening to the podcast, let me encourage you to realize the answer is, is Jesus. Uh, my mother was orphaned at nine years old. Her mother had a brain aneurysm and fell over at the barn milking the cow. A neighbor picked her up and carried her in the house, and she lingered there for a few days and died. In today's technology, she would have been totally, totally healed. I mean, it would not have been a problem. But she died at nine years old. My mother had no mother. She was then raised by a father and a, a, an older brother and um, an older stepbrother. Her father happened to be um, 59 when she was born, so he was more like a grandfather. He died at, uh, when she was 14 of old age. So here she was 
uh, an orphan. And uh, it, it brought some deep insecurities in her life. And one of the things that set me off to this reality is just thinking back to my dear mother. But you know, she had to make a decision. She never got bitter. And the way she handled these deep insecurities was simply trusting God. She was a wonderful mother. And honestly, I, there's not another mother on planet Earth I would wanted any different than my own mother. And I'll tell you why, friend, because she overcame very difficult. The absence, I could say, was her issue because her parents were gone. Uh, she overcame that by realizing that Jesus is the answer. And she never got bitter. She trusted God. And God gave her a wonderful life. She loved being a pastor's wife. She loved uh, being a mother. And she was a wonderful one. And I know the answer was the fact that she probably struggled with it to the day she died because it was something that, that was always there. But I know that the way she overcame it and became such a good Christian was the Lord Jesus. It was God. God's with her. She could trust the Lord to overcome, uh, even with those deep senses sometimes of, of insecurity and fears. And friend, you can overcome them too. Jesus is always with you. He, he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. So be encouraged. Uh, that We'll talk more about strongholds, but one of these strongholds is fear. It's insecurity. But Jesus is the answer. Well, just remember, gang, you're part of the the generation, a generation that's totally surrendered to God's will and totally dependent on his grace to win the world for Jesus. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the The Generation Podcast. For more faith-inspiring resources and information about joining The Generation, please visit thegeneration.org. That's T-H-E-E generation.org.